There are a ton of different ways that you could spend $75,000 on a set of wheels. You could get one of these, or one of these, or one of these, or even about four of these. Of course, if you live in Northern Ontario like me, you're a fair bit more likely to spend that sort of coin on something like this, the Ram 1500 Tungsten Edition. Now, as I stand here, there's an all new Ram 1500 readying for launch and it's totally redone from the ground up, meaning that this old gal is nearing the end of her life cycle and that after many years and several Ram test drives we've done here, this will be our final look at this generation of Ram pickup. And what a look it is. What's on your screen right now is the top RAM trim grade, and to put it simply, designers have left no stone unturned and no panel unstitched in applying as much swank and glitz and bling to this machine as possible. Most of that is inside, and we'll get to that soon. Elsewhere, it's a familiar story. Mostly, the tester got everything you expect in a top dog RAM, including four-wheel drive, air suspension, the eight-speed automatic, and not surprisingly, the Hemi 5.7-liter V8 with the better part of 400 horsepower which is a great engine if you want to run a proven and time-tested pickup power plant that's simple, effective, and not loaded with fancy turbochargers or direct injection. More modern trucks can create more power and torque, some even using less fuel, but personally, if I'm going to own a pickup for 10 years, I want an engine like this one, since it's been around for ages and they've built a trillion of them. Nice power plant too, proper sound when pushed, nearly invisible when driven gently, strong low-end torque, and overall a flexible performer. It even turns half of its cylinders off in moments where you're driving like a yoga instructor to help save gas. The air suspension helps too, it can lift the truck for off-road use or hunker down to slip more cleanly through the air, or to make loading passengers and gear easier. In back, typical pickup box, there's a divider inside and the smart and clean looking tonneau cover cleans up the look and protects your stuff. And it is a looker, instantly Ram 1500, instantly a little athletic, imposing, and in this tester's case, upscale. It looks like it can get stuff done, even truck stuff, but also it's classy enough to park outside of a fancy establishment. In back, the tester came with the Ram box storage bins built into the bedsides to keep smaller gear locked away, protected and out of sight. They're even lockable, weatherproof, drainable, and have an emergency release if you happen to find a way to lock somebody inside. Right. Some people don't like the RAM boxes because they take up space in the bed. That's fine. If you don't like them, they're optional, and skipping them will save you 1200 bucks. And as you'll see in a moment, you'll want to put that $1,200 towards some leather cleaner and protectant thanks to the cabin. Now, I'm not sure if burlesque is a word, but I think it probably should be because the interior of this thing, which is the real star of the show for the tungsten edition, looks downright burlesque. Roll that tape. <laughs> There's enough stitching in chrome and metal and leather and accenting to embarrass a number of six-figure luxury cars. One friend told me it reminded her of expensive horse tack equipment. Another said that it smacked of a certain special secret room from Fifty Shades of Grey, which I've never seen, so I'll take her word for it. There are even metal buckles, which are a bit cheesy, I figure, and they make me wonder if an orange cheetah will arrive when I look at them. Ultimately, though, it's a richly detailed cabin. Few elements were spared excessive swankification with as much accenting and flair as they could shove in. And did I mention the stitching? Yeah, so if you could just go ahead and run that through the sewing machine like four more times, that'd be great. Really, if there's anything in here that could pass through a sewing machine, then chances are it has, and more than once. And the colors and contrast help to pull it off. Even the instrument cluster has been jazzed up with a splash of texture and color on the trim surrounding the readouts. There's a lot going on in here, but it all ties together nicely. It doesn't leave you feeling like they've just glued on a bunch of extra stuff. The resulting atmosphere will wow you and your passengers with every visit. End of the day, this is all designed to appeal to an expanding shopper segment full of folks who want a pickup that'll serve double duty as a 4x4 luxury lounge. If you have a crystal decanter full of ritzy scotch on the desk in your study, this might just be the pickup for you. And it's a lot of money, but unlike many comparably priced sports luxury car models, this one has a heap of room, is very useful, and can tow heavy things. And just look at the space back here. If you flip these seats up and out of the way, you could get up to all kinds of... Eh, never mind. 
And you really do get everything. Motorized rear window, climate controlled seats, sunroof, probably the best central command touchscreen interface on the market, remote start, so many storage bins and cubbies and compartments that you could totally run a mobile office out of here. There's even a heated and wood trimmed steering wheel and a special smartphone slot. Elsewhere, typical Ram 1500, good driving position, a ride that feels tough and very durable, though usually without undue discomfort on rough roads, and even decent brake and steering response as trucks go. I um, overshot the camera there because the tester wasn't on winter tires. You shift gears with the same sort of metallic dial you'd find on a $600 luxury smoothie blender, and that clears space on the console for other things, and provided you've established object permanence and aren't too, it's not hard to use since it's a dial. But thing is, a truck is an inherently manly sort of vehicle, and yes, ladies drive trucks too, so please spare me the emails. But I have two problems with this shifter. One, how on earth are you supposed to shift gears when you're angry? And two, what if I'm parked and some rise against comes on the stereo and I go to crank it and get things a little bit wrong and wind up remodeling the back of a Jetta? Typical gripes elsewhere, as trucks go, this one gets a good bit thirsty if you're not driving it gently, and it can be a bit of work to park if you're not used to driving a big truck. Also, halogen headlights on a 75 grand vehicle are like serving an expensive filet mignon with a side of KD. End of the day, here's the most gussied up version of what is, at the time of filming, the oldest brand new Big 3 pickup on the market right now. And if you're after glitzy luxury galore with one of the most proven pickup drivelines on the market today, you'll want to take a close look while you still can. Pricing from about $60,000 or deck it right out like this tester for about $75,000. Thanks for watching.